Hi kids! Uh, today we're going to do lesson 13 in module 3 and it's a little bit different so uh, we're talking more about uh, using benchmark numbers to assess reasonableness of addition and subtraction equations. So the emphasis today isn't on getting the actual number even though you have to have an answer. Uh, the answer is going to be is this reasonable? Is that reasonable? And where are we in relation to one or in relation to a half? So it's really all about reasoning. So probably the biggest helpful tool for today is to have a number line and to just think about where each fraction would fall. Um, when in doubt, I always will say, well, just figure it out and see where you are and see how that plays into your reasoning. Um, also, we'll have uh, greater than one instead of greater than a half or uh, greater than or less than a half. And so you can have any number as a benchmark. It's really just kind of what you're shooting for. It's this predetermined point. And so in this fraction, this addition problem, you might say, okay, well, if I have one fourth plus one half, will my answer be greater than or less than one or greater than or less than a half? And so you have to just think about, well, it's going to be greater than a half because I already have a half and then I'm adding something that's less than half. So my answer will be less than one, but it'll be greater than a half. So it's just trying to um, show you uh, what is reasonable. And a lot of what we do is um, mental math anyway. So anyway, so this is a false equation. It's not reasonable because uh, it, this is way too small. This would be too small. Uh, we should be up around 75% or past half. And so then if you think about money, um, money is a great tool. You're not having a quiz. <laughs> money is a great tool. Uh, to think about in terms of like a quarter or half or three quarters and where that will put you with your um, with your estimates. So that's really what we're working on today. And so you can always pause the video and get the notes if you didn't finish them. And um, and yay, over a thousand subscribers. That's super exciting. So uh, I hope these are really helpful. And uh, I'm just going to keep on making more videos. So this math program is pretty hard. So let's jump in here. Are the following expressions greater than or less than one circle the correct answer? And again, this is just mental math. Think it through. So if you want to put a number line at the top and then label it with your zero half and one and then you can have your quarters this can just help you think about uh, it's just a tool it's a study tool so are the following expressions all right we've got one half if I'm already here understanding what half is is vital two sevenths what's half of seven okay so I have less than half if I have half plus less than half, then I'm not going to get to one. I'm going to be at less than one. So this is just the reasoning and strategizing behind it. Five eighths is greater than half because four eighths is half. And then three fifths is also more than half because half of five is 2.5 or two and a half. So if I have more than half, plus more than half, I will be at greater than one. Now when we have subtraction, remember that when you move up and down the number line, if you're going down for subtraction, you continue moving the same direction. So if I have one and a quarter, compare the size of these two fractions. Okay, one quarter is about 25 cents but if you take away one third, this is actually a bigger piece. Remember that the smaller the number, the bigger the piece when you have ones on top. So this is more than this value so that you will be at less than one when you have your answer. You don't actually have to solve these. You just need to understand 
where the answer would be. Now for this one, 3 and 5 eighths minus 2 and 5 ninths, when you do your subtraction, of course, the, easy, the whole numbers are easy. 3 minus 2 is 1. It's not really about that part. It's about 5 eighths minus 5 ninths. So if you are just really comparing 5 eighths, or 5 out of 8 pieces, this 5 out of 9 pieces is less. So we're taking away less than what we started with. And so if you're taking away less, then you're going to end up greater than 1. Even without solving, I know that I'm going to end up at greater than 1. Because 5 ninths is more about okay so um let's see or five ninths i'm sorry i just said that the wrong way five ninths is less than five eighths okay sorry i should probably stop talking and move on so we're taking away less okay are the following expressions greater than or less than one half? So now instead of one being our benchmark, one half is our benchmark. Your benchmark can change. So one fourth plus two thirds. Now again, think of money. If I have one quarter and then I have two thirds, well, what's the value of two thirds? It's, it's more than half, okay? And then I'm, I'm adding to that more. So it's going to end up being greater than half for my final answer. 3 sevenths minus 1 eighth. And again, what is half of 7? We're at less than half right now. And then we take away more, and even though this is very tiny, we're still going to be less than half. How about 1 and 1 seventh minus 7 eighths? So if I have just barely, this is a small fraction, okay? a little bit more than one, but I'm taking away almost one whole. I'm taking away almost a whole. Seven out of eight parts is almost the whole thing. Then my answer will be less than half when I'm finished. And then three sevenths plus two sixths, what are the sizes of these fractions? Again, this is just about half, it's just under half. And this is just under half. So if you have two that are just under half, when you put them together, you're going to end up with greater than half. So that's all about reasoning. And I mean, you could go through and just circle things, but then you wouldn't understand it or be able to apply it. So it's really important to be able to think these through. Um, use greater than, less than, or equal to to make the following statements true. Uh, five and two-thirds plus three and three-fourths compared to eight and two-thirds. So I know that 5 plus 3 is 8, so that's not the problem. It's how I would add the 2 thirds and the 3 fourths and compare that with 2 thirds. So 2 thirds here and 2 thirds here would be equal, but now I also have to add this. So it means that this side is greater than this side. And then for B, uh, 4 and 5 eighths minus 3 and 2 fifths as compared to 1 5 eighths plus 2 fifths. So if I was to take this away, okay, then I would have 1, but I would also have 5 eighths, which is a little bit more than half, minus approximately uh, a little bit less than half. When I compare with this one, I have 1 and 5 eighths, but then I have more. I have almost um, almost half here and greater than half here. So if I have greater than half and almost half, I'm getting closer to two, whereas this one is less. So you can have your less than symbol here. For five and a half and one and three sevenths, and then compared to six plus 13 fourteenths, you have um, the half here and then just about half here. So 5 plus 1 would be 6, so we're pretty close. Now, thinking about um, how these two are, uh, you can multiply and have a common denominator so that I could have 14ths here. This would be 7 14ths. And, um, and then this one would be 6 14ths. 
because of the scale factor I would use two. And when you add those two, you find that you end up with an equal comparison here. Then 15 and 4 sevenths minus 11 and 2 fifths as compared to 4 and 4 sevenths uh, plus 2 fifths. So again, you can do the subtraction and end up with 4, but you still have 4 sevenths, which is just a little bit more than half, and then you have to take away uh, this 2 fifths, which is almost half. And compare that to the 4 and 4 plus uh, 4 and 4 sevenths plus 2 fifths. And so I'm looking at these and I'm saying, okay, well, here I have um, a subtraction problem and here I have an addition problem. And so we're going to end up with more on this side because I'm adding it, I'm not taking it away. Okay, it's all just reasoning it out. So number four, is it true that four and three fifths minus three and two thirds is equal to one plus three fifths plus two thirds? And so we have to prove it by writing it out. So if we take our four and three fifths minus three and two thirds, what would I do? I would subtract and get one. Now to that, I still have my three fifths and then I have to take away two thirds because this still needs to be subtracted. And then I'm comparing this to the one plus three fifths plus two thirds. So what's wrong here? It's all about this sign. So it's not equal, okay? That is the problem. Um, this side is less, okay? Because we're adding here and subtracting here. So you can say this, it's not equal, a slash through an equal sign means it's not equal. And that's what this is asking, is it true? And you would say, no, it's not true. It's not true. Okay, so it should be two thirds less here, not two thirds more. Then for the next one, Jackson needs to be one and three fourths inches taller. And in order to ride the roller coaster, oh my gosh, we did a, um, we needed a weight thing. We were doing a zip line for our youngest and it was like, oh, she only needs to be like five pounds heavier. So what should we do? So we bought her ankle weights. <laughs> so it's kind of like that. Anyway, you need to have this, this height requirement for the roller coaster since he can't wait. I know what that's like. He puts on a pair of boots that add one and one sixth inches to his height and, and slips an insole uh Oh, with one eighth inch. Will this make Jackson appear tall enough to ride the roller coaster? So what I need is I need for all of the um, things that we're adding when compared to be greater than or equal to the one and three fourths. And so what you can do when you set this up is you don't have to calculate it. Again, we're not calculating today, we're thinking today. So I need for these um, added benefits to make up all of this three fourths. And what I can see is that this is tiny and this is tiny. And if this is one plus two tinies, I am not going to get to one and almost all. And so really, all these things are not enough uh, for Jackson to be able to ride the roller coaster. So, no, not enough to ride. <sighs> Poor Jackson, I feel bad. But next year, next summer, nobody can do anything anyway with COVID and we're all gonna have to be stuck inside for longer. It just makes me wanna cry. A baker needs five pounds of butter for a recipe. She found two portions that each weigh one and one sixth pound and a portion that weighs two and two sevenths pounds. Does she have enough butter? Two portions that each weigh this plus one of these. So it looks a lot like a tape diagram to me in three parts. 
and she needs the five pounds. Do these add up? That's the question. Uh, two portions that are each one and one sixth, and then one that's two and two sevenths. And so we want to know do those equal five pounds? And so what I'm looking at is the whole numbers. I'm going one plus one is two plus two is four. But then I have these tiny little fractions here and this little guy here, which is also less than half. This is a tiny, a tiny, and less than half. Does this all equal one? Because I need five pounds. I need to get a whole pound out of this in order to get the five. And what I'm seeing here is that this is not equal to one, okay? And I would need four plus one in order to get the five. So basically, she does not. It's making a scratchy sound. She does not have enough butter. Too bad. So that's really all we have for today. And if these are helpful, click subscribe. I'll be super happy to see you on the next video. And, um, and we'll, this is a short one today. So hooray, go have a great day and we'll see you soon. Bye.